So welcome to this beautiful Alice Neal exhibition. I'm very happy to be here in this wonderful room. And I wanted to start with the first words of your essay in the catalogue, Gerald Neal. You wrote Alice Neal on vacation, which is implying a more liberated, relaxing atmosphere, being outside, enjoying the nature, and above all, being with the beloved ones, with the family. And if you look around, here we see the garden of Spring Lake, the countrysides of Vermont, lush vegetation, Alice ch children, Hartley on a motorcycle, Richard coming out from a shower, her grandchildren riding a donkey. These simple pleasures of life are quite unfamiliar motives for Alice Neal, who is more known for her striking portraits of her neighborhood in Spanish Harlem or of the New York Bohemia. So Alice Neal on vacation. And I would like to start talking on how Alice has depicted children, first her own, particularly Richard, as we have this amazing work which we see here with Richard in a towel. You see he is scarcely clad, only with a towel around his loins, and you feel the discomfort of the teenager. So my question is, is this a sadistic painting? I'm not sure I would call it a sadistic painting, but maybe. Uh, certainly, I think it shows a certain amount of disquiet. I think he's very vulnerable in this painting. Um, not only vulnerable to intruding eyes of other people, but vulnerable to um, a quick slip of the towel, which would just leave him completely naked were it to fall down. He's very vulnerable also to the gaze of anybody who's passing by on the road behind. If you look through the hedge, you can see a little road behind. Um, so if someone were to pass by, he would be visible in this way. And I, I, don't, I don't know if I would call it sadistic. Obviously, it's a, a painting where he'd have to stand for quite a long time, like this, um, and it's in the garden. So it's semi-protected, but at the same time, it's difficult. Yeah, I think he's very uneasy. In its glance, you feel the discomfort very strongly, and the question on the sadistic approach makes a transition for me to one of her most famous portraits, which is the painting of her naked daughter, Isabetta, realized in 1934. And here in the show, in the room above, you see a second version of this portrait, very ghost-like, with fading colors, a bit unfinished. And it's a version of 1981, which is rarely shown. So my question to you, Jeremy, what about this portrait of Isabetta, where she's naked and frontal, in a certain way, a bit like Richard, as we see here? Could you tell us a bit more about the second version of the portrait? So the, the first version um, is quite a confrontational portrait. It seems to be, a, uh, I would say, a standoff, if you like, between the daughter and the mother. But the daughter is uh, by then uh, four or five years old, hasn't, been seen, hasn't seen her mother for four years, because the story is that uh, Isabetta, who was uh, the child of Carlos Enriquez and Alice Neal, was taken by Carlos Enriquez to Cuba to um, live with uh, Carlos's family, in theory because Alice and Carlos were going to go to Paris, so they needed somebody to babysit. Um, but in fact, she never returned uh, to live with Alice, and Alice then had a, a psychological breakdown. <coughs> and the first time that she saw Isabetta again was in 1934, uh, in Spring Lake, which is in this situation. And, um, uh, and that portrait came out of that meeting. Uh, she saw her once again in 38, and then uh, not at all. Uh, so uh, she didn't bring up the child and had no contact, as far as I know. So then uh, when she, in 1981, when she did the second painting, she hadn't seen her, and it was just a memory, and it's called Memories. It's just a memory of the child, and uh, it's painted as though the memory is both uh, very active but also fading. It's, uh, it, there's a distance there. There's very little paint on the canvas. She's begun by drawing in um, the composition uh, based on the previous painting, and then she applies a little bit of paint, and, uh, and then stops. It's as though, it's almost as though, maybe it's a little 
painful to carry on. Maybe the memory is not quite as strong as it would have been. And memory, of course, portraiture is, is very substantially to do with memory. It's, uh, it's about remembering how people are, remembering what people look like, remembering how they feel. Memory is a, a principal part of portraiture, even if the person's in front of you, because what you're capturing is not a particular moment. It's a whole series of moments that you're um, uh, fusing together into one single image. And, but in this case, of course, there was no child in front of her to paint. And it's a memory of possibly a happy time, but possibly also a difficult time. A di uh, you know, the first, encou first conscious encounter, I would say, in which the child would have a conscious memory of the mother. Because, of course, when Isabetta was taken away, probably she wouldn't have remembered much of her mother. You're here just in front of this uh, wonderful painting, seeing Nancy and the, and the twins. And um, these twins are very uh, awkward. Uh, we have here another twin uh, painting. Uh, and um, they are, I think it's Neil Hus Alice Neil herself, herself, she describes the twins, uh, they look like gladiators. <laughs> Uh, which I found very, very uh, uh, nice expression for these two babies. If I was to say it in one sentence, I think Alice saw the adult in the child. In other words, the adult that they would become. And uh, you can see that particularly in uh, the Antonia and Alexandra there, the twins, um, in their different personalities. Uh, and. I think there's a, um, a, a sense in, in which she is in, in all, sort of predicting the future in a funny sort of way, but seeing, seeing the, the future in the present. I think this is an extraordinary painting, partly because of the way it's set up. It's, again, it's a very confrontational painting. They're directly coming towards her. It's not, not at an oblique angle, it's face on. And um, uh, it, it, there's uh, no escape. <laughs> She's, um, Nancy is lying there. She's like a barrier, if you like, to the, to the deeper perspective. Uh, but she's a rather, she's looking as a sort of slightly Amazonian figure in this painting. Uh, and the two children are quite separate from her as well. You know, she's not uh, nurturing them in the sense that, you know, holding them or, or feeding them or anything else. And they, they seem as though they're on the march coming towards yeah, yeah. their grandmother. But I, the, uh, the extraordinary thing is, of course, that um, uh, you know, how long does it take to paint a baby? Can you keep a baby in that position for a long time? No, you can't. So again, it's a portrait very much based on memory as well as actual physical presence. She would have obviously set them up, but then you know you, you can't keep them still in in one place like that or in one position. That brings me to to the German tradition of, of children painting, uh, like from Philipp Otto Runge uh, to Otto Dix, because these often these children are look very very odd as well, like like small adults. So what is the relationship, so a question to you, to, to German art or to this German tradition of uh, children painting, which is quite different from, you know, Mary Cassatt's uh, painting. So it's, it's, it's really uh, not like uh, intimacy and intimate uh, universe and uh, very uh, sweet babies or sweet children. So as you said, so these children have really their own psychology, their own character already. Yes, uh, there's no sentimentality. I don't think there's any sentimentality in Alice Neal's paintings, whether it's uh, her own family or other children. Alice, if any, you could describe Alice as anything, it was anarchic. So I think that you know, the fact that she might see the anarchic side of uh, humanity, uh, I think, is a good observation. Um, I talked about uh, the landscape uh, of Vermont in the room next door as reminding me of the writings of uh, Thoreau uh, um, and his journals and the, the author of Walden. And, uh, you know, Thoreau, Rousseau, all that kind of thing is about the state of innocence and, uh, and that growth of man. So the thing about uh, Alice's 
pictures of paintings of children is I think she could somehow get inside them and see the world through the child's eyes as well so that the anxieties of about being in the world, being in an adult world, uh, in a, which in a funny sort of way, in a way has a relationship with Runger. When you look at Runger's paintings of children, everything is sort of seen as though it's from the scale of a child. So everything looks huge. Yeah. Uh, and I think the same could be said here. Elizabeth on the donkey, you know, it feels like the donkey is tiny and the yeah. child is huge. And, and, and it's the scale is a kind of, child's topsy-turvy scale of the world. I'm quite interested by the painting you have on the back side. This blue house, which reminds me of the Red House by Edward Munch, entitled Red Virginia Creeper. I think Munch became important for Alice Neal, and he was on view in New York in the 50s. They did, there was a major, yeah. major retrospective at the Museum of Modern Art in 55, I think it was, or 56. Um, and when she went to Denmark in the 70s, she went to Norway to see the Munch Museum. So undoubtedly, Munch was an important figure for her. The, there's a particularly Munch-like passage of painting in this, uh, in this painting, The Blue House, which is the area, the sort of um, flesh-colored, brown-colored area beside the road, which is a very, has a very strong feeling of late Munch. But I, what I, I mean, I think, you know, it's quite interesting the way you describe the porch as like a nose, and I guess you can see the windows as eyes, but, but I, and that is in itself quite interesting as a sort of characterization of a house as a human. Yeah. But I think what's also very uh, particularly Alice Neal is the fact that she didn't eliminate the gasometer behind the house, she just kept it in because it was there. And the road itself is a sort of rather boring piece of road, but she paints it because it's there. And it's part of the, you know, the sense of the place. And what I think you get in this room very much is a sense of place. It's, uh, it's a very particular place. This is not New York. This is Spring Lake, New Jersey. And there's a, a very um, specific atmosphere that's created uh, by these paintings. Because when you see some of these paintings in isolation, for example, I've seen Richard in isolation before, it's never really, um, I've never really understood why she would have painted it. Because it, as you talked earlier, you know, he's very vulnerable. It's a, it's a, painting outside is not what she does. She paints inside in New York, always in her apartment. Yeah. So here she's outside because the place is different and she's capturing the spirit of the place. We didn't talk about Hartley yeah, on the motorcycle. Right, yeah. um, so Hartley is Richard's brother, and they're facing each other in this face-off here in the gallery. Um, but I think what's interesting is uh, she really does capture the two different personalities. Hartley's more confident-looking, I would say. Um, uh, not afraid, <laughs> not sort of retiring. He's leaning forward, obviously, of, you know, he's on his motorbike, so you have to lean forward to hold the handlebars, but he's leaning forward in the, uh, and looking directly at his mother. Um, and he's almost, uh, you know, this, the landscape behind is fictitious. It's not, it's, it wasn't painted in that landscape. She's made that up. And he's almost like some kind of messenger of the gods, you know, some mythical character who's arrived overnight on his motorbike, um, the kind of airy, modern sort of Aries. And um, I think that there's a, that sense of uh, um, power, and obviously from the powerful Honda motorcycle, that best in its class, as he told me. Um, of the day, and um, it's a it's a really uh, vigorous painting, and it, it it doesn't have that sense of fear that you feel in the painting of Richard. Uh, it's interesting because this is a sort of antique picture, and this is sort of modernity because with the motorcycle. So it's really a portrait of the of of its time, and so which is this one? Uh, yeah, uh, sort of uh, he's uh, of an antique uh, uh, statue. And so it's a very nice, uh, really yeah. very well hung. So this contrast is this dialogue between the two portraits. And there's a different, there are two different senses of risk 
So the sense of risk in Hartley's painting is the risk of an accident on the motorcycle. And the risk of, sense of risk in the Richard painting is that somehow the towel will drop off <laughs> and reveal himself naked. And I think that's part of the anxiety. I mean, you have three, three hours standing with a towel like that. I can never stand more than about two minutes before the towel comes undone. So 